Assalamu alaikum. This is our lecture number 35 of managerial economics and the topic that we are discussing is pricing practices. In our previous two lectures we have already discussed some of the pricing practices such as price discrimination, uh, multiple pricing model and also we have discussed jointly produced uh, product model. Today we will be discussing transfer pricing and markup pricing. First we will consider transfer pricing. Now, in today's uh, modern industrial world, which is quite complicated, the firms, they have different operating divisions. That is, one firm is not a completely centralized ident uh, entity. It has different decentralized units, which are called subunits. Sometimes they are called subunit 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. And these subunits, they are either they are uh, producing something, abhi ye jo subunits hai, wo aapas mein unka jo hai transaction hoti hai. That is, the output of one unit is used as an input of the other unit. For example, uh, agar aap, iske liye hum bohat si examples aapko dete hai, lekin pehle ye samajna zoori hai, ki different jo divisions hai, these are the divisions of the same enterprise. That is, the same firm has different operational divisions and those divisions are, some of those uh, divisions are the selling divisions and the others are buying divisions. So, the selling unit is the revenue generate kar raha hai. Aur jo yahan pe purchasing unit hai, uh, that is uh, incurring a cost. So, there is a difference between these two. Or ye bhi ho sakta hai ki ek unit jo hai, wo ek time pe sell bhi kar raha hai aur iske saath saath wo purchase bhi kar raha hai. So, is tarah se inke sub units jo hai, that is these uh, divisions of the same company they are also called profit centers because they are generating profits in this sense. Now, each unit of, each of these units, they have their operational performance. Yani ke un, unki jo bhi performance hogi, agar wo production mein hai, to wo kuch uh, jo bhi produce kar rahe hai, usko dousre apne unit ko sale karenge, aur isi tarah se aage kaam jo hai, wo chalta jayega. Aur isko vertical relation bhi kehte hai, vertical integration bhi kehte hai, और इसकी बहुत सी रियल वर्ल्ड में एग्जांपल्स हैं जैसे कि जो मीडिया है हाउस है पावरफुल है बहुत ज्यादा सिमिलरली वी कैन कंसीडर द एग्जांपल ऑफ ऑटोमोबाइल इंडस्ट्री वेयर डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ ऑटो पार्ट्स आर दे आर बीइंग प्रोड्यूस्ड इन डिफरेंट प्लांट्स ऑफ द सेम कंपनी एंड देन एट द एंड दे आर द फिनिश फॉर द फिनिश प्रोडक्ट दे आर ब्रॉट टू द अदर यूनिट वेयर दे आर uh, you know, assembled or uske baad unke jo finished product hai, wo saamne aati hai. Isi tarah se hum example le sakte hai, agriculture sector se, there are various food industries and their final product which is brought into the market. These are, uh, these include jellies, jams, fruit juices, ketchups, etc. And they have their own farms where they grow these uh, fruits and vegetables. And then these uh, are used as, uh, that is the output of one a division is used as input in the final product. So, in this way, one division is going to go up and up. So, this is why we call vertical integration. And for this, I have given you an automobile industry ke example, di, ya ke, uh, ya jo media house or agriculture. Hai. And similarly, we can think of a steel company which has its own coal mine. Uh, now, the question is that the coal mine uh, has to decide that how much coal it has to sell to the uh, parent steel company. And similarly, the question, and uh, if it is selling to the parent steel company, whether um, it is selling to the other sector, that is the outsider, and at what price. Similarly, the parent steel company has to decide that uh, uh, whether they uh, are going to sell the entire uh, uh, coal from the uh, coal mine, that is its own coal mine, or they are going to uh, they are going to purchase it from the outsiders and uh, similarly they have to decide that at what price they are going to uh, purchase it. So these are the questions, uh, these are the uh, complex questions which have to be answered and uh, due to these uh, questions the question of uh, transfer uh, pricing arises. That is the transaction between these uh, operational divisions of the same company uh, that is called the goods that are uh, transacted, those uh, goods or services, they are called intermediate products. Or to inki pricing here, that is called transfer pricing. So this is what 
we are going to discuss today. What is meant by transfer pricing? And uh, we'll see that there are different scenarios for it. That is, we have to consider one case where there is no external sector. Uh, in that case, uh, we have to, you know, uh, consider the transaction uh, the, uh, which, which are in trough firm. And then we have to consider another scenario where there is an external uh, sector, that is the external sector or the external market exists. And then uh, we have to consider whether that external market is a perfect, perfectly competitive market or it is not a perfectly competitive market. But before uh, coming to uh, the, all these scenarios, we have to consider some other points. And those points are that uh, the determination of this internal, this uh, transfer pricing or transfer price is very important for the firm. So the determination of these transfer prices, if it is wrongly determined, then it will affect all the divisions of the uh, firm and also the firm's uh, entire, that is the firm itself. Because we are that final product is the firm that is in the market. अगर शुरू में जो ट्रांसफर प्राइस है वो गलत डिटरमिन हो जाएगी तो वो सारी जो डिविजन्स हैं उसमें क्योंकि हम कह रहे हैं कि वर्टिकल इंटीग्रेशन है तो वो सारों में ट्रैवल कर जाएगी और इसके बाद फाइनल जो प्रोडक्ट है उसकी भी जो प्राइस है वो गलत डिटरमिन हो गई हो जाएगी विच इन अदर वर्ड्स मींस दैट इफ रॉन्गली द ट्रांसफर प्राइस इन वन डिविजन इज डिटरमिन क्वाइट हाई दिस विल अफेक्ट द द प्राइस ऑफ द फाइनल प्रोडक्ट तो इस तरह से जो प्राइस है फाइनल प्रोडक्ट की वो भी जो है पहले से वो भी हायर होगी दैट मीन्स दैट द प्राइस ऑफ द फाइनल प्रोडक्ट विल बी आर्टिफिशियली हाई तो इससे जाहिर है कि जो आप जो फर्म जिसकी हम बात कर रहे हैं उसको नुकसान होगा बिकॉज दिस माइट बी द प्राइस विच इज़ नॉट कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग टू द प्रॉफिट मैक्सीमाइजिंग लेवल ऑफ आउटपुट सिमिलरली um we have we have seen we have said that these all these operational divisions they compete with each, each other in the sense that uh, their profitability is uh, closely watched by the management so is tarah se kyunki unki jo bhi unko rewards diye jate hain ya bonus di jati hai or if they are offered a pay raise that depends uh, that is per performance based so they have to be careful about it and uh, therefore this transfer pricing uh, the determination of this transfer pricing is very important in that sense because uh, uh, agar jo transfer price hai that is uh, set wrongly let's say it is artificially isko aap bahut zyada low kar dein that will harm the production division which is selling the output which is uh, as i said which is called intermediate product so in that case what will happen this will ruin the morale of the managers workers of the production division kyunki is tarah se agar unka artificially profit jo hai wo low hoga to isse unko rewards jo milte hain like bonus hai in the form of bonus or pay raise or uh, actually unki jo job hai kai dafa wo bhi is pe depend karti hai isi tarah se jab artificially uh, price jo hai uh, ye transfer price low hogi to iska nuksan hoga production division ko but the marketing division which is purchasing this product it will have an uh, it will have an advantage over the production division so um, that is why uh, it creates sometimes it creates a price wars among the different divisions different operational divisions so as i said earlier that it is very important to determine this price carefully okay next uh, um, as i said earlier that we have to consider different scenarios Uh, in which the external market is there and the other possibility is that the external market is not there now in order to explain these different scenarios we have to consider uh, different diagrams and uh, but before e explaining those diagrams i would like to uh, give some of the assumptions that we have to make here uh, in order to simplify our presentation we will assume that there are only two divisions that is the production division and the marketing division production division is uh, producing uh, this intermediate product and the price of that intermediate product is called transfer price these products are also sometimes called uh, transfer products kyunki wo ek division se dusri division mein transfer ho rahi hain and uh, the the output of one division that is the production division it is used as input uh, in the other division in this case it is the marketing division or manufacturing division 
तो मार्केटिंग डिवीजन जो है वो दूसरी डिवीजन है दैट इज दर्चेजिंग यूनिट इन दिस एग्जाम्पल एंड द सेलिंग यूनिट इन दिस एग्जाम्पल इज प्रोडक्शन डिवीजन सो प्रोडक्शन डिवीजन इज जनरेटिंग रेवेन्यूज वेयर एज द परचेजिंग यूनिट विच इज द मार्केटिंग यूनिट इन दिस केस और मार्केटिंग डिवीजन दैट इज इनकरिंग कॉस्ट नाउ दिस इज दिनैरियो इन विच वी आर गोइंग टू वर्क द अदर असम्शन दैट वी हैव टू मेक हियर इज दैट वन यूनिट ऑफ इंटरमीडिएट प्रोडक्ट इंटरमीडिएट प्रोडक्ट इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर ईच यूनिट ऑफ द फाइनल प्रोडक्ट दिस इज अ स्ट्रॉन्ग असम्शन बट वी हैव मेड इट फॉर द सेक ऑफ सिंप्लिसिटी so we have only two uh, divisions that is the production division and the market division marketing division and we are assuming that there is no external market if there is no external market this would imply that the entire intermediate product which is being produced by the production division this is um, sold to the marketing division of the same firm uh, similarly the marketing division since there is no external sector marketing division has to uh, purchase all its demand uh, from the production division so this these uh, transactions are intra firm and there is no external sector which is involved here uh, in for this purpose in order to explain this uh, situation we have drawn a diagram which you can see on your slide now in this slide you can see the transfer pricing where no external market is involved there is no external market here and since we have said that one unit of intermediate product is required for each unit of the final output therefore this means that the intermediate product that is the number of units produced of the intermediate products and the final product are the same now look at the diagram which we have drawn here you can see that in this diagram we have the marginal cost of the different uh, divisions that is uh, mcp and mcm where mcp is the marginal cost of production division and mcm is the marginal cost for marketing division p stands for production and the subscript m stands for the marketing division then you can also see mc which is the vertical summation that is the marginal cost total marginal cost of the entire enterprise which is the vertical summation of the marginal cost uh, mcp and mcm so mc is equal to total marginal cost is equal to mcp plus mcm next in this diagram you can also uh, notice that we have drawn the demand curve uh, which is faced by the marketing division that is the marketing division has to face this demand curve for its final product which it has to sell in the market for the final consumption its corresponding marginal revenue curve is given by mrm where as i said earlier that m stands for marketing division and the subscript p stands for the production division now in this case as you can see that uh, the marginal cost total marginal cost of the firm is intersecting the marginal revenue of uh, that is mrm the marketing division we are considering first now it is intersecting mrm at qm equal to 40 units that is final product which is to be produced is equal to 40 units or we can say qm is equal to 40 units that is the quantity produced and sold by the marketing division is equal to 40 units what about the quantity produced and sold of the production division which is represent by which is represented by qp that is uh, q that is quantity Uh, produced and sold for the production division yahan pe um, aap dekh sakte hain kyunki humne ye pehle assume kiya hai that is uh, one unit of uh, intermediate product is required each to produce each unit of the final product so this means that the number of units produced in the uh, marketing uh, division they are they must be equal to the number of units produced in the uh, production division because they are required or demanded by the marketing division so isliye yahan pe aap diagram mein bhi dekh sakte hain that qp is also equal to 40 units and this is shown by the point ep qm is shown by the point em where mc that is the total marginal cost is intersecting the mrm that is marginal revenue of the marketing division and uh, 
PM, that is the price of the final product is $14, which you can see on the demand curve DM. Now, the transfer price of the product, that is the intermediate product, which is sold to the marketing division, that is equal to $6 in this diagram, you can see, and this is shown by the point EP, where MCP, that is the marginal cost of the production division, is intersecting the QM, uh, the vertical line here, uh, since we have said that the number of units produced of the production division is equal to the number of units produced of the, mar of the marketing division. And the reason is that uh, one unit of intermediate product is required by each unit of the final, uh, by each unit of the marketing division which is to be produced and uh, it is offered for sale in as uh, for the final consumption in the market. So, here we have seen that the correct level of transfer pricing which is presented as PT and this is equal to $6, this is equal to the marginal cost of production, that is the production division. Next, we have to consider another scenario in which we will consider the case where an external market is there, that is the external market exists. So, obviously in that case, uh, the production uh, division, it has a choice. That is, uh, the production division ke paas bhi choice hai ki iski jo product hai, uh, wo uh, uh, internally uh, jo hai sale hoti hai ya agar uh, wo isse zyada uh, excess bana rahe hai, uh, matab isse zyada output hai iski jo uh, marketing division ko uh, chahiye, to wo usko external market mein, uh, is, uh, these excess units can be um, they can be sold in the external market. Or, isi tarah se jo marketing division hai, agar uski jo demand hai, wo uh, production division ki production se zyada hai, to is tarah se wo bhi purchase kar sakte hai, jo excess, uh, jo extra units hai, wo uh, external market se purchase kar sakte hai. So, they have now uh, a choice because external market does exist. But as far as the determination of the transfer price is concerned, that will depend on the nature of the market structure that we are talking about. That is, what will be the nature, what will be the type of the market structure of this external market. So, it is quite possible that this external market is a perfectly competitive market or it is not a perfectly competitive market. So now we have to consider two different scenarios that, that is uh, the external market is there but also we have to consider the type of the external market that is that we are considering. The type of if the type of the external market is uh, that the, it is perfectly competitive market and uh, the, others, uh, the other possibility is that it is not a perfectly competitive market. For that purpose now we consider another diagram. Uh, first, we will consider the first scenario, that is the when the external market is perfectly competitive. And next, we will consider the other possibility or the other scenario in which the external market is an imperfectly competitive market. Now, in this diagram, which you can see on your screen, you will notice that it is uh, identical to the previous diagram that we have considered that we have considered for the first scenario where there was no external market. In this case, the external market does exist. The only difference here that you can notice is that uh, the MCP, that is the marginal cost uh, of the production division is lower than in the previous diagram. MCP, so in order to differentiate this marginal cost of production division from the previous diagram, we have denoted it by MCP prime marginal cost of the production division is lower in this case. Therefore, now the production division can produce more. In this case, previously it was producing 40 units and now it is producing 50 units. Since marginal cost of the production division is lower, therefore it can produce more. In this case, that is instead of 40 units, now it is producing 50 units. As you can see, MCP prime is intersecting the transfer price PT which is equal to $6 at uh, the output level which is 50 units that is QP in this case is equal to 50 units. Since we are saying that the external market which exists in this case but it is a perfectly competitive market therefore the market price which in this case we are calling 
transfer price is given, that is the firm is a price taker. So the price is given to the production division and PT is equal to $6. Since it is a perfectly competitive market, therefore, the demand curve uh, it, face, it is facing is a horizontal demand curve and uh, um, this is labeled as DP. That is the demand curve for the production division and it is equal to uh, the marginal revenue MRP which is also equal to PT that is the transfer price and at this price MCP prime is also equal. This is how we have explained that the external market which does exist in this case is a perfectly competitive market and it is shown by the horizontal demand curve that the production division is facing and also now we, uh, we have seen that DP that is the demand curve in this case is equal to the marginal revenue MRP and this uh, should be as it should be equal to the price too. Since the firm is price taker the price is given as six dollars here. Now we have to consider the demand for the final product that is we have to consider now the marketing division. If you look at the diagram you will notice that now MCT that is the total marginal cost which we have already uh, which in the previous uh, diagram we have labeled as MC equal to MCM plus MCP. In this case since we are saying that the price will be the same that is the transfer price is given as six dollars and uh, th this transfer price is given because the firm is a perfectly competitive firm. In the external market, we have seen that it is a perfectly competitive market. So that now the marginal cost of the marketing division is labeled as MCT. That is the total marginal cost of the marketing division is equal to MCM. That is its own marginal cost plus PT that is the transfer price. And this MCT, that is the total marginal cost, is equal to, uh, this is intersecting the marginal revenue of the marketing division, that is MRM, at point EM. And uh, QM, that is the quantity, that is the quantity of the final product, is again uh, 40 units uh, as previously, as we have shown in the previous uh, diagram. The difference here uh, is that the production division is producing 50 units whereas the final the marketing division is producing only 40 units so it requires 40 units from the production division the remaining 10 extra units that is 50 minus 40 10 units they are sold uh, to the external market which is a perfectly competitive uh, market uh, by the production division so production division to have an intermediate product जो ये यहाँ पे प्रोड्यूस कर रहा है और वो उसको 50 यूनिट्स अगर उसके वो प्रोड्यूस कर रहा है तो इसमें से 40 यूनिट्स तो इंटरनली जो है वो सेल कर देगा अपनी ही एक और डिवीजन को एट द प्राइस ऑफ सिक्स डॉलर्स वेयर द प्राइस इज द ट्रांसफर प्राइस एंड सिमिलरली एट द सेम प्राइस इट विल ट्रांसफर द रिमेनिंग टेन यूनिट्स टू द एक्सटर्नल मार्केट at the same price that is PT equal to six dollars. This diagram can also be or this scenario can also be explained algebraically. On the screen you can see the demand functions which are faced uh, by the marketing division. So here we are going to consider the transfer pricing competitive external market algebraically. The demand function for the marketing division is equal to 180 minus 10 PM where PM is the price that is uh, for the marketing division or the same can be transformed into a price function so that we get PM is equal to 18 minus 0 0.1 QM and the marginal revenue that the marketing division is facing is given as MRM is equal to 18 minus 0 0.2 QM. We can easily derive this MRM that is the marginal revenue curve for the marketing division from the price function that we have already obtained simply by multiplying it by QM. We find the total revenue for the marketing division and then we differentiate with respect to QM to get uh, this marginal revenue for the marketing division. Now assuming that the marginal cost of the production division and the marketing division are given as MCP prime is equal to 1 plus 0.1 QP and MCM is given as 0.1 QM. 
the perfectly competitive external price for the transfer product is PT equal to $6 as we have seen in graphically. Here we can find the best level of the output of the intermediate product for the production division by setting its marginal cost equal to the transfer price. That is MCP prime is equal to PT. So MC is equal to PT and MCP is equal to 1 and we know that MCP is given as 1 plus 0.1 QP equal to PT which is $6. So equating these uh, we get 0.1 QP which is equal to 5 and QP is equal to 50. So to determine the profit maximizing level or the best level of output for the production division we have simply equated the marginal cost of the production division to the transfer price. And we have seen that uh, as a result, we get the number of units produced uh, by the uh, production division, which is equal to 50 units. And graphically, we have shown the same. That is now the production division, uh, since its cost is lower than before, therefore, it can produce more. And uh, instead of producing 40 units, now it can produce 50 units. The best level of output for the marketing division is determined by finding the total MC that is marginal cost of the marketing division that is MCT and setting it equal to its MR. That is we have to set MCT equal to MCM plus PT as we have shown graphically too where MCM is equal to 0.1 QM and PT is equal to 6. Then MCT is equal to 0.1 QM plus 6 which is equal to 18 minus 0 0.2 QM and now um, equating it, it to the margin revenue of the marketing division we get 0.3 QM equal to 12 so that solving for QM that is the final production of the marketing division this is equal to 40 units as we have shown graphically too that in case where the external market was not there the production of the, the production or uh, the number of units produced by the marketing division was equal to 40 units and uh, we have get we have obtained the same result here algebraically because algebraically we have uh, graphically bhi bataya hai ki dono surto mein, uh, that is with an external market and without an external market the number of units produced by the marketing division is equal to 40 units and uh, the price in the marketing division for the final product is $14 or ye bhi humne dekha hai ki with external market and without external market for both of these cases the price is $14 per unit. Now the final scenario in which we will uh, see what will how the uh, transfer pricing or transfer price is determined when the external market is there but now the external market is not a perfectly competitive market. In this case, as you will see on screen, that the diagram that we have drawn for this purpose is uh, similar to the diagram that we have used in case of third degree price discrimination. The reason is in the third degree price discrimination, as you know by now, that the firm, that the monopolist or the oligopoly firm has to sell in more than one market. That is, the markets are segmented, either they are uh, uh, labeled as market one, market two, or they are domestic markets and foreign markets, so that uh, the monopolist was in a position to um, charge different prices in different markets. And what is the uh, reasoning behind it? The reasoning behind it that we have already explained while we were discussing price discrimination that the price elasticity of demand is different in these two markets. Okay. Here you will notice that there is a similarity between the third degree price discrimination diagram and the diagram that you can see on your screen now. The reason here is that here the production division will play the role of a monopolist in the sense that it has now selling in two segments of the market that is the internal market and the external market. Since uh, here we are saying that uh, it is the uh, acting like a monopolist in this case therefore it will be charging different prices in different segments of the market. Now let's see the diagram here it has three panels panel A, B and C so we are going to consider here the transfer pricing for imperfectly competitive external market 
and uh, the leftmost panel which is panel A is presenting the marketing division and panel B is presenting the external division that is the external market which is uh, imperfectly competitive external market and the last panel that is panel C is presenting the production division that is the selling uh, division in this case. Look at the uh, panel A first of all you will see that here the uh, marginal revenue of the marketing division is drawn and this is called the net marginal revenue of marketing division because here we are drawing marginal revenue uh, MRM minus MCP. Here you can see that uh, we have a net marginal revenue which is being drawn here and that is MRM minus MCP. So MRM may say MCP that is the marginal cost, uh, the marginal revenue of marketing division minus MCP, the marginal cost of the production division. And we have already noticed that MCP, that is the marginal cost of production division, was also equal to the transfer price, that is PT. Okay, this is the net marginal revenue of the marketing division. And in the next panel, that is panel B, you will see the external market, uh, the external division, yeah, external market here. Here, the demand curve faced by the external market is given as DE and its corresponding marginal revenue is presented by the curve MRE and uh, the last panel we'll see what uh, the production division. The marginal cost of production division is labeled as MCP and uh, the marginal revenue of the production division is labeled as MRP and this marginal revenue of production division is obtained by the horizontal summation of the net marginal revenue from the panel A, from panel A and the marginal revenue E that is MRE from panel B. The horizontal summation of these two marginal revenues uh, gives rise to the marginal revenue of production division MRP. You will notice here that there is a kink in the marginal revenue of production division at uh, when price is equal to $8. What's the reason? The reason is that at this price, the external market is not willing to purchase the product of the production division, which is the intermediate product in our case. Now, looking at the panel C, we might notice that uh, the number of units produced by the production division is now again 40 units, because at this point, the marginal cost is uh, uh, intersecting the marginal revenue of the production division which is shown by the point EP. We can see that from this point, a horizontal line is drawn through the panel B and panel A. And uh, as you can see here that EP is equal to EE uh, and PT in panel A and panel B. Okay. So this means that an output of 40 units, the production division is selling. It is uh, selling at uh, $4 in the external division and uh, at a price of $4 in the marketing division and at a price of $6 in the external division. As I said earlier, that now this production division is acting like monopolist and we have seen here that uh, at the intersection of the marginal cost of the production division and the mar marginal revenue of the production division, profit maximizing level of output is 40 units. So how these 40 units are allocated to these two markets, that is the internal market, which is the marketing division of the same firm and the external market. Here, as you can see in the diagram, that in case of marketing division, 20 units are allocated to the marketing division, that is the one of the internal units of the same firm. And uh, that is, it is uh, the production division is selling internally 20 units to the marketing division at a price of four dollars and that is now the transfer price is internal transfer price is equal to four dollars per unit but if we look at panel b there we might notice that 20 units are also allocated to the external unit external division or external market uh, but at the price of six dollars per unit so here as i said in the start that uh, in this case we can see that uh, the production division is acting like a monopolist seller 
and it is charging different prices in the internal segment of the market and the external segment of the market where the external market is a not a perfectly competitive market uh, so that it has a downward sloping demand curve which is presented as DE and its corresponding marginal revenue curve is presented as MRE and here uh, we might notice that uh, the firm uh, in this case the production division is selling its intermediate product at a transfer price of $4 per unit to its own vision that is uh, which is a part of the same firm at a price of $4 per unit while it is selling at a price of $6 that is the transfer price is equal to $6 for the external market. Next we are going to consider another pricing model which is called pricing rule of the thumb or it is also called cost plus pricing markup pricing. So far, up to this point, we have discussed different pricing models. But in all of these, as I said earlier, we have used the same rule, that is the prof profit maximizing rule is the same. Uh, that is, we uh, have to equate the marginal revenue to the marginal cost uh, for all three cases where the market is not perfectly competitive market. If it is a perfectly competitive market, obviously then marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost and it is also equal to the price. In this model, which is labeled as markup pricing or full cost pricing or it is also called the rule of the thumb pricing. Because it is said that the pricing practices are actually the managers who all the time uh, hai, marginal cost or marginal revenue calculate. One reason is that it is very difficult to calculate karna difficult. Hai. Or do say that they don't have so much information. Hoti. That is, they don't have the perfect knowledge about their demand relations and cost relations. So this uh, alter, this theory was presented, and uh, it is called that here uh, only the firm has the firm needs to calculate its average cost. So this is the um, criticism. Hoti wo ye hai ki, uh, when we explain it, you will see that uh, okay, it, uh, it is very simple and easy to calculate the markup on uh, cost. But as far as uh, the rationale behind uh, this uh, pricing practice and the pricing practices that we have uh, discussed so far, uh, we will see that it is not much different. So it cannot be considered as a different uh, pricing theory. So, we can't say that this is a new one that has added to it or the approach is different because this is a method which is called a, also called a shortcut method. That is the rules of the thumb method or a shortcut method which is practiced by the firms frequently uh, in the real world. This uh, is a lot of formula that we will tell you about. This is a lot of use because it is uh, calculated. काफी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड है बट एज फॉर एज दिस असर्शन दिस थिंग इज कंसर्न कि ये कोई नई थ्योरी है इसके ऊपर काफी ज्यादा कंट्रोवर्सी है तो इसको हम देखते हैं व्हिच इज कॉल्ड मार्कअप प्राइसिंग इन केस ऑफ कंपैरेटिव मार्केट द मार्जिन प्रॉफिट इज इक्वल टू एमआर माइनस एमसी व्हिच इज इक्वल टू जीरो or MR is equal to MC, the rule that we have applied so far, but in case of competitive market is also that MR is equal to MC, which is also equal to the price of the product. For the imperfectly competitive markets, price is greater than MR and the rule that we use for profit maximization requires setting MR equal to MC. In microeconomics textbooks, you might find this rule that we uh, have also derived in one of our previous lectures where the margin revenue, price elasticity of demand and price of the product are related as mathematically they are related as MR equal to price multiplied by 1 plus 1 over price elasticity of demand. Here we have negative sign B use kar sakte because price elasticity of demand obviously is negative but it's quite understood that uh, the sign could be negative. Since our profit maximizing rule says that MR is equal to MC therefore we can also express it as MC equal to instead of uh, MR that is substituting MC for MR we can write MC is equal to P times 1 plus 1 over elasticity of price and in, our, in one of our previous lectures we have calculated and derived this formula 
and we have calculated the optimal price that which is given by optimal p hysteric which is uh, equal to mc over 1 plus 1 over elasticity of price markup or full cost pricing fully allocated average cost and that is the the procedure that the firm has to follow to use this pricing policy is that the firm has to estimate its average variable cost and then the overhead cost that is the fixed cost or isko jab wo isme add karengi to firm ke paas average cost jo hai wo calculate to estimate ho jayega so the firm will be using average cost instead of marginal cost now so that we get the formula markup on cost which is calculated as m is equal to p minus c by c or this can be expressed in terms of price so that solving for price we get p is equal to c times 1 plus m where p is the product price m is the markup on cost and c is the cost now uh, c is uh, actually the average cost just make a Uh, average variable cost and the overhead cost that is the fixed cost is also included this simple formula is used to determine the price which is called the markup pricing practice so yahan pe jo price ka formula hai which is actually it is given as markup on cost m is equal to p minus c by c that is and now converting it or resolving for price we get p is equal to c times 1 plus m as i told you that here c stands for average cost now we already have explained this that margin revenue price and elasticity mathematically they are related by this formula previously we have said that for marginal revenue we have substituted mc and we have computed uh, we have calculated the optimal price but since now we are saying that instead of marginal cost the firm is only estimating its average cost which is presented by the symbol c so instead of using mc now we'll be using c that stands for average cost so here you can see that now price can be be expressed as c times elasticity of price divided by ep plus 1 previously humne yahan pe mc jo hai wo use kiya tha but now since we are saying that the firm do not um, normally they do not uh, calculate their marginal cost and their marginal revenue curves instead they use this rules of the thumb uh, pricing practice which is also called markup pricing to isme humne jaise pehle kaha that the firm will calculate the average cost so the c represents the average cost already we have said that p is equal to c times 1 plus m and now we are saying that p is equal to c times ep by ep plus 1 therefore equating these two expressions for price we get c times 1 plus m is equal to c times elasticity of price divided by elasticity of price ep plus 1 so that now cancelling out c kyunki c jo hai uh, c is on both sides of the equation on the right hand side and on the left hand side therefore can solve for m that is markup on cost and this is derived as m is equal to ep by ep plus 1 minus 1 using this formula we'll see that there is an inverse relationship between markup and demand elasticity for example if ep is equal to minus 2 then utilizing this formula we can calculate markup which is equal to 100% and if on the other hand elasticity of price is equal to minus 5 then markup is calculated as 25 or 25% the less elastic the demand curve the larger will be the markup so jaise maine pehle kaha shuru mein ki markup pricing ka jo concept hai it is considered to be uh, uh, it it cannot be considered as a new pricing theory because basically we are following the same rationale that uh, we have followed uh, which was behind the uh, market uh, uh, pro- where we have used the marginal uh, concepts kyunki yahan pe aapne dekha ki humne yahan pe जो फॉर्मूला इस्तेमाल किया है दैट इज द फॉर्मूला दैट वी हैव यूज्ड वेयर द मार्जिन रेवेन्यू प्राइस एंड द प्राइस इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ डिमांड आर मैथमेटिकली दे आर रिलेटेड एंड फ्रॉम दैट रिलेशनशिप वी हैव सीन दैट द रेशनल बिहाइंड दिस इज दैट यहां पे हमने जैसे एग्जांपल ली है दैट इफ प्राइस इलास्टिसिटी इज 2 देन द मार्कअप इज 100% इफ ऑन द अदर हैंड price elasticity is 5 then markup is only 25% so there is an inverse relationship between these two and this is what we have already seen while we were discussing previous 
pricing practices where we have used this marginal cost, of, uh, marginal concept that is we have equated marginal revenue to marginal cost. Uh, there the rational was the same. वहाँ पे भी हमने जो rational था वो यही था कि for the और price discrimination में और दूसरी जो भी हमने pricing practices यहाँ पे discuss किए हैं वहाँ पे हमने देखा है that when the price elasticity that is the more elastic the demand curve is the lower will be the price so in other words markup जो है वो कम होगा और इसी तरह से जब प्राइस इलास्टिसिटी जो है जब डिमांड का बहुत ज़्यादा इलास्टिक होगा तो प्राइस कम होगी और मार्कअप उस पर कम होगा और लेकिन जब डिमांड कर्व जो है उसकी इलास्टिसिटी कम होगी तो प्राइस जो है वो ज़्यादा डिटरमिन कर सकते हैं और उनका जो मार्कअप है वो भी ज़्यादा हो सकता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन द ग्रोसरी बिजनेस द मार्कअप इज़ क्वाइट लो दैट इज़ इट लाइज बिटवीन लेट से टेन टू ट्वेल्व परसेंट Uh, the reason is that there the demand curve is uh, much elastic as compared to the other industries like uh, electronic or electrical appliances where the demand curve is वहाँ पे जो demand curve है वो उसकी elasticity कम होती है और इसलिए वहाँ पे markup जो है वो ज़्यादा होगा तो जहाँ तक हम देख सकते हैं so we cannot say there it has as far as this uh, markup pricing is concerned it has its advantages Uh, but we cannot consider we cannot uh, consider it as a new theory of pricing so um here we have noticed that uh, it has many advantages uh, and these advantages include first of all that it is very simple and easy to calculate but as far as its simplicity is concerned uh, it is isko hum keh sakte hain ki itna zyada simple nahi hai in the sense that we are saying that it is very difficult to calculate the marginal cost and the Margin revenue of the firm. Similarly, it's not easy to calculate the total cost or the average variable cost of the firm, and uh, it is also sometimes become impossible to uh, estimate the overhead cost for the different products. So, देखने में ये simple लगता है. That is the uh, the formula that we use here is that M is equal to um, the that uh, for the price we use the formula that P is equal to C times one plus M. तो इट इज़ सिंपल एंड स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड अपेरेंटली ये बहुत सिंपल है लेकिन इतना ज़्यादा सिंपल ये कैलकुलेट करना ये भी नहीं है एंड अदर एडवांटेज ऑफ दिस फॉर्मूला इज दैट और दिस प्राइसिंग प्रैक्टिस इज दैट यू डोंट यू नीड लेस इंफॉर्मेशन एंड यू डोंट हैव टू हैव परफेक्ट नॉलेज अबाउट द प्रिसाइज डेटा तो इसलिए ये uh, इस तरह से ये इसका एक एडवांटेज है और इसी तरह से अनदर एडवांटेज इज दैट हियर रेलेटिवली द प्राइस वंस इट इज डिटर्मिंड इट इज रेलेटिवली स्टेबल अनदर एडवांटेज इज दैट प्राइस कैन बी इंक्रीज दैट इज द जस्टिफिकेशन कैन बी गिवन फॉर द फॉर एन इंक्रीज इन प्राइस व्हेन कॉस्ट राइजेस बिकॉज द फॉर्मूला एज यू लुक एट इट इज क्वाइट सिंपल पी इज इक्वल टू सी टाइम्स वन प्लस एम सो इफ सी राइजेस प्राइस हैज टू बी इंक्रीज तो ये इसका एक और एडवांटेज है और इसी तरह से इसके डिफरेंट एडवांटेजेस हैं बट एज फर एज द क्रिटिसिजम इज कंसर्न दैट इट कैन नॉट बी कंसिडर्ड एज अ न्यू थेरी और अ न्यू प्राइसिंग प्रैक्टिस बिकॉज इट हैज द सेम रीजनिंग और रैशनल बिहाइंड इट दैट वाज वर्किंग इन आवर प्रीवियस रूल दैट वी हैव यूज सो फॉर दैट इज इक्वेटिंग मार्जिनल रेवेन्यू टू मार्जिनल कॉस्ट विद दैट वी कम टू एन एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन थैंक यू खुदाफिज